Hi everyone, it is March 10, March, it's May 10, sorry, 2019, Davenport, Davenport, Iowa, is still underwater. And those of you who live in this area, can you confirm that it's still underwater? This has been underwater, this area, underwater for weeks now. Uh, what's going on? But even the um, videos that I posted on, the levee breaking in Danvaport, well, it seems as if it's a lot worse now. Um, that, you know, the flooding just continues. I would like confirmation from you guys on the ground. You know, there are so many people suffering right now. Uh, so many. And you know what? I, I don't understand. I don't understand how it is. This is Grafton, Illinois. This was posted um, yesterday. It looks a lot worse. What I don't understand is I'm not seeing an awful lot of articles on the flooding that is occurring and how many people are affected by this. <clears throat> now we seem to have more and more people affected every single day. I don't see a lot of people on YouTube posting about this enormous flooding from, well, Canada on down to Texas and we had an awful lot more flooding in the last 24 hours do you know how many people are suffering right now you know I want to this is a woman in Jackson uh, Mississippi and she's posted she's trying to figure out how to get to where she wants to go to, but the roads are flooded. Okay, I just left my house. I live on Post Road going toward the Yacht Club, and a friend of mine told me to beware of the road right in front of Shuckers, which is Oak Road. So I'm gonna turn it around. I'm on the levee right by Pelican. Hang on a second. So this is the water. There's a policeman right there. Evidently, they've got another one down there. I don't know what's going on, but I'm supposed to be in Jackson, so. I may be turning around. I don't know yet. I'm going to see how far this will take me. This came in. And I will tell you that there are people in, still in Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, uh, Texas, Mississippi, Arkansas, Oklahoma, dealing with this uh, incredible inconvenience with road closures, flooding, Still, it, it doesn't seem to be receding. Maybe in some areas it's receding, but there's an awful lot of areas where the water is just sitting, just sitting on prime farmland, sitting on roads. I want to read some comments that I got just within the last 24 hours. I live in southeast Michigan. I drive a truck. I see chemtrails in the sky all the time. Why am I reading these comments? Because I want people to understand that no, it's not just me or a few conspiracy theorists who are believing that man is, you know, uh, causing all of this destruction, that we're just crazy people and we have these bizarre beliefs. No, it's facts, it's evidence that we have provided for years that so many people are just closed. They will not open their mind. All you need to do is open your mind, open your mind to have a conversation with people who understand what's going on. Stop closing people down. Stop silencing them. Because when you do that, you make yourself the enemy. You make yourself complicit with 
all of the people who are suffering, what is weather warfare? And yes, <laughs> it's hard to you know, take in, but we are being destroyed. This country is being destroyed. And they are using unconventional weapons for an unconventional war. You know, if they weren't dropping, you know, five inches in two hours of rain, causing so much destruction, instead they were dropping bombs, you would un understand fully that this is a war. But you just can't take in that we are at war. But they're just dropping rain bombs, destroying people all over. Here, uh, I am just seeing this because I lost power on Wednesday for over 24 hours. Northeast Texas had very bad weather, lots of trees down, power lines down, roads closed, homes damaged, cars damaged, people trapped in their homes, etc. The same story you post here over and over. Until it happens to them, most people are not going to wake up. Even then, some of them will blame climate change when it is all from the weather terrorists. They have studied us thoroughly in the past 12 months. They learned a lot. They don't need hurricanes anymore to cause the flooding because they understand that Americans are just refusing, refusing to acknowledge that, oh, maybe something else is happening here, that it's not climate change, that it's not Mother Nature. Maybe something else is happening. They won't even go that far. So when they've collected all the data from all of us, and they have analyzed that data, data and they have created profiles on, believe it or not, yeah, if not all, most adult Americans, they understand our thinking, they understand our psychology, they understand our psychi um, psyche, they understand how damaged we are. So they can do anything to us now. And we've become so damaged, so demoralized, that we just don't know. We can't even think outside the box. We can't figure anything out. We just have to sit and watch this every single day. That frustrates the hell out of me. Nebraska, Paradise Lake Homes, they are now all uninhabitable and ready to be condemned. About two weeks ago, I took a ride down to the Missouri-Nebraska border near Brownsville, Nebraska. As close as I could get, and the sight I saw was alarming. It looked like I was looking out over the ocean. There was water everywhere. This was all farming land before. The flood that occurred here was back in March, and the water was still that high. So, um, I, I know that I'm not getting the full picture of the damage that has occurred since March, and now it's, you know, uh, well, getting to mid-May. In that short period of time, there has been tremendous damage all over in those states, Nebraska, Iowa, um, Michigan, uh, Ohio, Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. There has been tremendous damage to people's lives. And all we can do is get a glimpse, not for lack of trying to understand the full picture or getting a full picture. It's that they're, they're reporting differently. That's what I'm getting. The reporting of what is happening is different. And one of the differences I noticed that mainstream media keeps replaying, replaying the same videos of damage that occurred a week ago. And yet I'll find some articles and they will in print, you know, word, not video, list some of the damage that I never get to see, you know, in video or on mainstream media. And I think that they are 
really wanting to conceal how many Americans have been destroyed just within that short period from March to, to the present day. Wild night here in, in Houston last night. All schools closed today. They say we have a reprieve for a while today and the major storms back for tonight and Saturday. We all went to bed for a few hours but fully dressed in case we had to flee in the middle of the night. We learned a lot from Harvey. So it looks like this is our new normal. On my list to purchase life vest and small boat. I'm a senior citizen. Never thought those items would be on any list, especially since I thought I was being wise and purchased my home in a no-flood zone 33 years ago. Carol, I like to play devil's advocate. Let's say 80% of what you post is pure bullshit. The remaining 20% is overwhelming. Yeah, what is happening now is overwhelming. It's head spinning. It's hard to take it all in. And, you know, kudos to those who can just report, you know, with ease. But I am, I'm really struggling with, you know, the amount of life that is uh, suffering. And, yeah, you know, maybe I'm one of those, you know, who, I don't, I can't remember the quote verbatim and I don't remember who said it but I think it was Gandhi who said if there's one person suffering in the world you know then I suffer for that one I don't know I can't remember but maybe one of you will remember and <laughs> leave it in the comment section um, that's why I can't get off of you know, posting on what's taking place. People need to know, and if people don't want to know, then they won't watch the videos. Fine. But, um, here, the people that are making all this destruction possible is not them. It is us. Thank you, Lori. Thank you for getting it. Thank you. <clears throat> Everybody needs to take a huge step back and really analyze what is taking place here. You know, we are all contributing. And for those who just continue to attack me for saying we, it's not we, it's them, you are, I'm sorry, you're not getting the connection between what the individual does and the nightmare that we are living and there is a connection so if you don't get that connection you will never change you will never face yourself in the mirror and and ask that question how am I contributing and once you get to see how you contribute to this nightmare well hopefully what's inside of you that moral core will be strong enough for you to say, I can't keep contributing. So here, the people that make the formulas in the chemtrails, the people that build the devices that spray the chemicals, the pilots who fly the planes, the same with 5G installation, the people who engineer the systems, the people who make the parts for the systems, the people who install the systems, etc. Even down to the truck drivers who deliver the parts for installation. Can you not see how all of these people involved are contributing to the to the murder that is taking place to the destruction of this country? You know, someone passed along a Marfugel video and he had this woman on from North Carolina who was talking about how her husband was involved in installing these 5G small cells in North Carolina. Uh, hello? Do you not see that your husband is 100% involved in killing people?
Yeah, it means that we need to make very big changes. Uh, and I guess a lot of people who do understand that, well, I contribute, okay, whether it's working in the school system, working, uh, you know, with these um, airlines that are spraying our skies, whether it's working for telecommunications industry, whether it's working for the government, local, state, federal, uh, and whether it's working for corporations or chemical companies, or it doesn't matter. You're all part of the destruction of life, not the creation. And everybody needs to stop. I think a lot of people think, well, if they get the connection, I, I know that nobody else is going to stop, so I'm not going to stop. And I'm just going to continue because it's my livelihood and this is how I make my money and that's it. You know, we make excuses for what we do. We've got to stop making these excuses. I live in Europe for the past several years, and the weather is as crazy as I have ever seen in my long life. Thunderstorms that are not normal happening in the UK, Austria, Germany, Poland, Czech Republic, France, Switzerland, Belgium, to name the countries I've lived or extended for an extended period of time and can tell the difference from 40 plus years ago. Yeah, it is all over. The black carbon clouds, I've been seeing them a lot lately. You see the black crap that a whole lot of people will say, oh, it's the pollution, oh, it's CO2, oh, it's this, it's that. It is black carbon dust, which is one of the very inexpensive materials that they use to modify the weather. North Michigan had snow. I've been around some time and they are messing up the weather. This is not normal. I can see up to 13 planes spraying in an hour's time period. There is not that much air traffic in a week on a normal day. Hey, I like your videos and your content is interesting. I just feel you are getting too involved emotionally with your content. But there are good things in this world and allow time to experience them to find balance. Too much thinking about who, why, what, where, and how can be detrimental to your health. I will tell you that all of you who are not emotionally involved in what is taking place, you place a heavier burden on all of us who actually are balanced. Are balanced. Uh, we have done the work necessary to integrate you know, all aspects of ourselves. We're not disintegrated human beings who can look at all of this destruction and all of this suffering that is taking place and just feel nothing about it and just say, well, I've got to go out and find some joy and find some fun. I have said in videos, you have to do that to just, you know, maintain your sanity. Some of us have lost all resources to find that joy or to have that fun. Yeah, there are some of us who are living very different experiences than an awful lot of you. So, um, but I will tell you that when you are surrounded by people who just don't give a shit that people are suffering, that's an energy that so pulls you down and it does place a greater burden on those who do care. Because when you care, you can't just shut it off. You can't shut it off. And you want these people to be helped. You want to see people in communities helping one another. <clears throat> because that gives you, that then, you know, uh, gives you a better energy. It inspires you. You see that people are they're coming together, they're working to help one another, and they're resolving their problems. This country, find an American who can resolve anything. You know, whether it's personal conflict or the problems that we have all over the country, problems that government face, we don't resolve anything. It's like we're, like, we've become this people on the whole, I'm not talking about everybody, but most people, oh, 
you know, if I don't have to, I don't resolve a thing. If I'm comfortable, to hell with you who are suffering, who are uh, even friends. Ah, uh, betray them. Who cares? You know, it's like, is it that people have so little care uh, that they're only thinking about their own little life? That they really just can't think of anything to do to resolve the, the many problems that so many of us face in our own communities? That's what I see. No care. Oh, people talk a good game, but there's no care that is put into action. Now, I'm not saying that's everyone, but I am saying it is the majority. So when people say, well, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? We, there's nothing we can do. Bullshit. There's so much that you can do within your own community. You know, I'm tired of listening to that because that's the excuse that you give in your head. You tell yourself there's nothing you can do so you can live comfortably. So you don't have to extend yourself. You don't have to be inconvenienced. You just go along doing what you do every single day. You don't have to do anything. You don't got to dig deep. You don't have to face yourself. You don't have to do anything. Well, what happens when the destruction comes your way. I don't think you should expect too much help. Yes, I am. You know, I face it in real life. I faced so many subscribers who I've met who have been, wow, um, okay, now I understand why we're not getting anywhere, but nobody wants to do any work on their own self. Here, Carol, you need to wake up. This is from the wrath of God. It says in the Bible, all these things will happen. It's not harp. It's not DARPA. It's God pouring his wrath out on an unrepentant world. Thank you, blessed be. Stop blaming God for what psychopaths are doing to us. Start standing up for God and his people and demand, demand our government. Stop killing God's people. Okay, so there's an awful lot of Christians who believe that this is uh, Satan, and Satan has, you know, uh, has army of people who are attacking us. Well, guess what? God, you're the army of God. You're supposed to be taking action to in this war, in this spiritual war. I think a lot of people who leave this these comments. Oh, it's a spiritual war, Carol. You're not getting it. Oh, I get it. I got it a long time ago. Hence the reason I did an awful lot of work to get myself as right as I could possibly be spiritually. Now, does that mean that I'm just fabulously right? No. I work every single day. No. And, you know, the hard part about that is when you do that work, you see that you're alone. Oh, there are people <laughs> all over, but you're alone in real life. Looking around at people and, and well, you understand how easy it was for the psychopaths to destroy us when you have people who just don't care about anything in terms of what's happening to us collectively. You know, um, that's got to change. It, we've got to do the work individually to change ourselves. We have to start changing the way we live. And no, you can't, you know, go to Washington, D.C. and change anything there. But you can have an effect in your own families, in your own communities. 
you know, band together in your communities. Somebody left a, a, a comment, and I'll get to it in a second, but storms in Louisiana now, flooding now, schools are closed today. This is so engineered Lafayette here. Rain is pounding my house right now, flooded here in 2016. Oh, no rain, no rainbows. Okay. I really hope that you are okay. Please, everybody, check in, leave a comment stating that you're okay. There's nothing natural about any of these disasters. They're man-made by pure evil, absolutely. What really gets me, Christians, will not believe this is man-made, will not even look at it just like the rest of humanity. They just don't get it. Frustration? Yeah. I'm with you on that. I believe Satan is using humans to ruin the earth. Well, guess what? God uh, is using you, well, to save the earth, to protect the earth, to guard the earth. Where are you? What are you doing? The storm that passed through Pleasanton was frightening, very frightening, seriously. I had to step out of my home around 5 or after, and I noticed how the skies were. Very overcast, poor visibility due to extremely high levels of moisture uh, in the air, literally so much energy. The infrared satellite showed a massive explosion of condensed air blossoming the trigger fuel for these storms to pop all around northern Mexico. Well, I've showed that on radar. But here, the problem is, who do you do donate to? Even when charity starts out good, money corrupts. Just look at D.C. So you don't donate and you don't do anything. No, you go out in your community. You try to organize with the good people in your community, with the Christians in your community, and you get people to donate to you. And then you help those in your community. And if there's no need in your community, then you reach out to others in other communities and you help them. It has been unseasonally cool in Las Vegas this year. It's still cool. Uh, it should be in the 90s by now, not normal. We have also had more rain. It's raining now. I've started a journal of the weather here in uh, Vegas. We used to have 340, 350 days of sunshine. No more. I just heard thunder. We don't get thunder. My area of East Texas was hit very hard yesterday with severe weather. Lots of people still don't have power here. My power was out for 24 hours. Damage from the storm was widespread. The people of Texas don't deserve this. No. No. You know what? And, yeah, I thought about that. Um, you know, if you don't wake up, then you deserve this. No. No one deserves this. Nobody deserves to have their life destroyed by sick psychopaths, narcissistics, narcissistic um, personality types. No one deserves this. No one deserves this. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Floods infiltrate deep into the substructure of buildings and homes causing black mold proliferation inside walls and basements under floods floors. Black mold is bad, 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 bad for human health. I've got black mold in this apartment. Ugh. I'm in Louisiana. Check out the Denham Springs LA flood of 2016. I drove out to Denham, Baton Rouge, 2016. Interviewed people. Posted videos. Posted video of a couple who had a GoFundMe and nobody donated. I donated $20, kept checking back at that GoFundMe. Nobody donated. No one. They couldn't part with $5, right, to help this couple. What the hell is wrong with us? Extending our flood warning to 2.15 a.m. Houston is getting hammered or slammed. It looks and sounds like a tropical storm just lost power for a few minutes. People lash out at those who speak truth because it scares them. Another common response, religious fanatics, 
they try to save you. Why don't you try saving those in your community? Why don't you try saving those? Not by, not by demanding that they believe what you believe, but helping them. Child's mind. My heart goes out to all of you suffering. Love from Canada. Guys, I'm going to be posting another video on what took place last night. But I have to tell you, um, no, I can't stop posting on what is taking place because the most, as far as I'm concerned, the most important news is the news of people hurting, people needing help, and those who are getting affected on a daily basis. Now, surely we've got an awful lot going on, but I will tell you, for those who are suffering the consequences, losing their homes, losing their businesses, losing lives, uh, the, the loved ones, um, Everything stops, and it becomes survival. Everything becomes survival mode. You're in crisis. What is most important? Helping those people out of crisis. Getting them out of survival mode. And if we can't figure out how to do that, then there's something wrong with this community. Sorry. If you cannot, as an adult, think hey, okay, things are getting really bad, and I'm sure that there are an awful lot of people suffering in my community. I've got to think about how to help them. If you can't get there, okay, you've got to, you've got to ask yourself, why haven't I, why haven't I even had that question come into mind? Why Am I not organizing in my own community, trying to uh, get donations for all of my fellow Americans who are suffering? Why? What is wrong with me that I sit back and I just watch everybody suffer and take no action to help them? 